What's up YouTube, it's Gemini, and this is going to be the first video that I do in a series where I showcase a lot of my old builds with the new ascendancies. The first build I chose to update was the Hedgy Housemeister. This was my level 95 hardcore character in the most recent Ruckus League. The Ruckus League is a special event that Grinding Gear Games implements from time to time that includes and encompasses a lot of the previous Challenge League mods, sometimes including all of them. And I wanted to mention this because this is arguably the hardest hardcore content I have seen since closed beta. Unfortunately, the demise of this character ended with a power outage during a thunderstorm. That is no fault of the character. Now let's take a quick look at the ascendancies and why I chose Juggernaut over Berserker or Chieftain for this character. If I were to go Berserker, I would most likely pair up the Rite of Ruin and Aspect of Carnage. Aspect of Carnage gives me 10% increased damage taken, that is a pretty hefty downside, but we get 40% more damage, and that is a multiplier, so that is quite significant. In addition, you get a pairing of physical damage with attacks and attack speed nodes with Crave of the Slaughter. This is a pretty interesting notable as it adds a lot of flavor to your character. When you've been hit recently, gain attack speed. When you've been hit recently, gain movement speed. So it's kind of like a retribution type mechanic, which I think is pretty awesome. And then we have Rite of Ruin, which is 6% reduced damage taken if you've killed recently. And you can also not be stunned if you've killed recently. With the prerequisite node being physical damage with attacks and armor. So these pairing of nodes give you a lot of defense as long as you keep up your momentum. The reason I did not choose to go Berserker is because I like to be really, really good against bosses. And when bosses don't have adds that you can milk, then these benefits are kind of non-existent. So the offensive tools are definitely there. However, with bad layouts or really hard map mods, the extra damage spikes can catch you by surprise. So I opted not to go Berserker, but let's take a look at our next option, which is the Chieftain. If we take a look, Tao's Forest Strength is probably one of the better nodes for this character. It gives you 40% increased armor, 10 all res, 10% reduced mana cost of skills, and 10% increased strength. So that's a really sweet two-pointer. In addition, you get 0.5% life regen per second and 20 strength before that. Unfortunately, the other nodes just don't really fit the theme of this character as it involves totems and chance to ignite with fire damage. There are a lot of regen nodes on the other parts of the tree, However, I feel like they're insignificant compared to the alternatives. Now let's head to the Juggernaut and see what it has to offer. Unstoppable gives you 10% increased movement speed, which this character does not need. You cannot be slowed to below base speed, which would help Cyclone. Movement speed cannot be modified to below base value. That means that in this case, the Cyclone would move at base movement speed. Unfortunately, movement speed is not a core element to this character's design. It gets around by using Leap Slam almost indefinitely, thus promoting attack speed as it pairs with Leap Slam very well. Undeniable gives you 10% increased attack speed, which is awesome for mobility, offense, and defense. And here's another kicker, it gives you 1000 flat accuracy. This is pretty amazing as accuracy is very hard to attain as your base dex is very low, and usually gear with good life, resist, and high accuracy is hard to find. And I want to stress the significance of this undeniable node. And when I start making these characters, I start out with two-handed maces and I use resolute technique. And then I transition into crit staves when I have the gear. Now that the accuracy is given, I can transition sooner because I won't miss as much. And this is the problem I feel a lot of people make is they transition too soon from RT maces. They don't have the appropriate accuracy and their character is often worse off than their RT maces version. Undeniable is undeniably the best two points you can spec for a crit two-handed marauder. Moving down to unbreakable, it says cannot be stunned and that is passively. That's better than unwavering stance because it doesn't come with a downside. Armor received from body armor is doubled. This gets better and better the higher armor values you get on your chest. When you're leveling up this character as RT Maces, this is a great choice as accuracy gives you nothing as resolute technique. And moving along to our next notable, Unflinching. This one is a no-brainer. 20% chance to gain Endurance Charge when you are hit, plus 1 to maximum Endurance Charges. This allows this character to get 8 maximum charges, up to 9 if you have a Corruption on your belt. 
The nodes before and after it give you increased attack damage and armor. And finishing out this wheel, we have Unrelenting, which grants you 6% increased damage per endurance charge, with 8 charges as 32% increased damage. That's both physical and elemental and chaos if you use an Itziri Flask. Then we have 8% reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charges. And with an automated way to get endurance charges through either melee critical strikes, with self-casting Enduring Cry, and with endurance charge or melee stun attached to your Leap Slam, it is no problem to be at max endurance charges. This node alone fixes a lot of the problems you may have had in the past with elemental damage and marauders. Additional maximum res was stripped away from the marauder tree a long time ago. However, this 8% reduced elemental damage taken equates to a 2% max res for both fire, cold, and lightning. With a well-rounded character, you want to cover your weaknesses. And while unbreakable is nice, it does not offer that elemental damage reduction. So combining Arctic Armor with 8 Endurance Charges, 9.6k armor, and 29% chance to block attacks with the addition of a Rumi's Concoction or you could use a regular Granite Flask of Iron Skin and then a Taste of Hate, I can assure you that physical damage is not a problem. This character has solo cleared Malachi in the past and now with the Ascendancy, it'll be even easier. With maximum charges, this character sits at a very comfortable 100k single target cyclone damage and 78k sweep damage. With Taste of Hate popped, we're looking at a 122k tooltip with cyclone and a 90k tooltip with sweep. A quick rundown of the defenses, we have 570 life regeneration per second, 9663 armor, 29% chance to block without roomies. We have Taste of Hate, which is a lightning coil in a bottle. We have a 10% chance to evade attacks, 8 endurance charges, and then we have the 8% reduced elemental damage taken while at maximum endurance charges. And we also can't forget the skill gems like Arctic Armor and my Castle Damage Taken GMP Arctic Breath, which chills mobs or enemy monsters. I have a Vol Grace linked with increased duration, which helps with those sticky situations when you want that avoidance. And we have a significant amount of damage that crits and shatters destroying corpses, preventing porcupines from exploding. It is worth noting that all this gear was obtained in the Challenge League, and some of it has gone legacy like the Taste of Hay and Rumi's Concoction. However, it doesn't change the functionality of this character. Now while I have taken the time to ascend this character, I have not farmed the lab for proper glove, helm, and boot enchants. So that's just another way to take this character to the next level. If you're interested in more details about this character, I will refer you to my previous guide. And as it just so happens, this character did not change anything in the skill tree or its itemization. It merely ascended and gained power. So feel free to check out my profile or my old guide in the description below. There you will be able to see my items, gems, and even my jewels. And lastly, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm going to share you another version of the Leap Sweeper, but this time as a duelist. What changes I've chosen and why? and how you can improve it further with enchants and other things. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and let your friends know of all the upcoming projects that I have. My name is Hegemony, and I'll see you guys in the next video.